So let's start. Let's start today's webinar. Today's webinar would be covering the subject which uh, a lot of people actually interested in is how to integrate uh, in your data platform the ClickHouse as a as a database, as a data warehouse, as your main uh, storage. And uh, for this need, we at Double Cloud implemented so-called data transfer, which is a, a native ELT tool. It's extract load tool uh, for ClickHouse. So let's uh, gradually start it. Let's uh, first start with uh, introduction. Let me introduce just myself. My name is Andre. I'm an engineering manager at Double Cloud, and I'm actually passionate about distributed system, about uh, data engineering, data pipelines, and I actually love to transfer data. Also, uh, you can uh, reach me out on LinkedIn if you if you want some uh, questions. Ask for some for some questions. I will always like like to help anyone with uh, with those subjects, moving data, gluing data together, and organizing the efficient pipelines. So, uh, quick words about Double Cloud, what we are about, and what we are actually delivering. Uh, Double Cloud is a uh, we we at Double Cloud we building a data platform on top of open source and open source tools. We believe that this particular set of tools is a perfect for modern data architecture. Uh, and uh, key uh, thing for the modern data architecture is actually speed and uh, uh, reliability. And uh, for speed and reliability, we rely actually on a ClickHouse and a Kafka and other tools. And we actually provide them as managed services. That's why we're actually talking about these uh, services, about ClickHouse and about Kafka. Uh, so here's a brief uh, introduction of what we will be talking today. Today we will be talking about first what is a click house and how it fit in modern day analytics, which scenarios it can cover and which uh, workload it can handle quite easily. Uh, what is double cloud transfer and how it helps to uh, make Click house even better uh, and even more scalable and manageable. And I will show you a small demo how to set up your own uh, Private analytic pipeline uh, with a ClickHouse and transfer all together at Double Cloud. So, what is a ClickHouse and why actually it's very good database for analytics, uh, for modern analytics? Uh, classical analytical workload usually rely on uh, uh, com complicated batch workload, batch pipelines, and actually usually store data in a cold format somewhere in the cold storages, and usually have some latency in terms of how to calculate this data. And it's usually rely on uh, 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 on uh, data pipeline, batch data pipeline, which introduce you some latency. And also query latency can be quite significant, especially if, if you still rely on classical transactional database. Classical transactional database is not really good for any analytical workload, which usually do some aggregation and summarization, etc. That's why we actually rely on analytical databases. Analytical databases in this case is quite diff diff different beast. Analytical database usually means a uh, columnar database, uh, when you have uh, data stored in a different pattern in the columns, and such analytical database can handle queries much, uh, much more efficient if those queries not about one particular row but about a group of rows. And the ClickHouse is a such a database. ClickHouse allow you to store the data in efficient way in a columnar format, and those columnar format allow you to uh, quickly scan, group, aggregate those data and building like. Uh, uh, analytical cubes in a real time. Another important thing that ClickHouse uh, support is uh, low latency delivery, but low latency delivery is ClickHouse is a bit complicated things because ClickHouse as a many of other uh, databases that's uh, good for analytical purpose is not so easy to manage in terms of uh, set up and delivery pipeline. So how, how to build a delivery pipeline to a ClickHouse efficiently? To understand this, you need to understand a little bit of details of implementation of a ClickHouse. ClickHouse, at the end of the day, is an analytical database. It stores data in a big blobs of data, and those big blobs of data is actually grouped not by the rows, but by the columns. So uh, this actually brings us a natural uh, desire of a ClickHouse to have a bigger blobs 
because big envelopes means less reads and more aggregation and more performance. So to write that in a click house efficiently, you need to ag <clears throat> aggregate data in a sort of a batched way, but you don't uh, need to do this uh, like with very big batch. Budgets just need to be reasonable. And reasonable number here can be something between 50 and 200 megabytes. So uh, in ideal world, ClickHouse, if you want to um, uh, set up a delivery pipeline to ClickHouse, you need to aggregate some sort of a buffer. So you have a buffer that accumulate data before ClickHouse, and then once that buffer fulfilled, you just flush it to a ClickHouse. This is an ideal use case, how to ingest data to a ClickHouse. But uh, how how this match to real world? And this actually is a question that I want to answer today in this webinar. In the real world, uh, it actually depends. In the real world, when you have a ClickHouse, usually ClickHouse or any other analytical database is lending data uh, for the serving purposes. It's not the source of truth of the data. It's a replica of the data or copy of the data. So you depend on the source. Where is your actual source of truth for this data? And source of truth actually can uh, bring some difficulties to how to bring this data to a ClickHouse. Uh, we can actually group these uh, sources in a kind of typical use cases that the ClickHouse used for. And the typical use cases for ClickHouse can be broadly divided into two big groups. First group is a data warehousing. Data warehousing is a pattern in analytical workload when you build uh, uh, in your analytical database, a warehouse where it's, you lend all your data in one place, and then you query this place, uh, query this data from this analytical warehouse. In this case, analytical uh, warehouse should lend as much as pos as many as possible tables, tables uh, in, from different uh, uh, sources, and aggregate everything to a single place, and it became kind of like a uh, unified entry point for your analytics to look at it. Another case in this scenario is a streaming analytics. Streaming analytics usually rely on something from uh, uh, a streaming perspective. The classical streaming example is the Kafka with the Kafka topics, but there is also other streaming uh, tools like a cloud native Kinesis or Event Hub or maybe Pops Up. Those uh, streaming analytics rely on the a bit different pattern. If you take a look on the data warehouse, uh, you build the, uh, your data warehouse on top of your transactional data, which is stored somewhere, and it actually have uh, not. Uh, it, it actually have some history. So this data is already there. You just need to bring them. In a streaming case, it's a bit different because streaming is more about uh, increment of a data rather than the history of a data. In a streaming, the most important part is how to deliver data as fast as possible on as, as huge volume as possible. So uh, let's figure out, first of all, how to de deliver the uh, first case here, the streaming analytics. In a streaming analytic case, uh, what you usually have in your application is a sort of an actor uh, which act as a data producer. The, this actor can be either your application or your user, uh, uh, but this user will be anyway com communicating with, with your uh, data streaming platform uh, via application. And those applications are usually connected to some sort of a buffer. In most cases, it's just a Kafka. So you just have a topic, this topic has a data, and then uh, this uh, uh, data topic is populated uh, in in, the, in a Kafka, and that's a, that's your actual state of the start of building your data platform. You have a topic. This topic that needs somehow to be delivered to a ClickHouse, and for that need we have a double cloud transfer, which is a cloud native tool for ClickHouse. We try to build this tool as uh, as uh, convenient as possible to connect ClickHouse to a ClickHouse, and it's just simple uh, plugin uh, communication. You just popped in in the in a Kafka source. Uh, you specify how you read this data from a Kafka and then connect to your ClickHouse cluster. And then that's it. The magic delivery mechanism is in place. Uh, our application will just buffer everything. 
will uh, parse everything and write data to a clickhouse as a perfect delivery mechanism. In this case, you don't need to handle about um, offset management, visibility questions, uh, monitoring, etc. And also it uh, can be uh, quite scalable both vertically and horizontally. Vertically, I mean, in, sp in a specific case, what you need to actually understand is what is the data volumes that you provide from a Kafka. And those data volumes can vary from several kilobytes per second or per minute to several gigabytes per second. And scalability is important. In a Kafka world, scalability uh, lives in two uh, dimensions. First dimension is how much data you have on one particular partition, which is your unit of parallelization. And second, how many partitions you have. And to be able to uh, deliver as much volume as possible, we need to do both vertical scaling and horizontal scaling. Vertical on single partition and horizontal for many partitions. And we support both of those scaling mechanism up for, for your needs so you can handle any load from a very small one to a very big one and you don't need to care about this much uh, the only possible uh drawback here is that it's cost a little bit because you need to set up infrastructure for this and this infrastructure is basically a transfer and transfer is not a free but this is low cost in terms of how how in terms of uh, to comparing it to, for example, uh, managing your pipelines on your own and building application for that space. So this is what we actually d deliver for as, as, a, as a double cloud, as a platform. We give you uh, this transfer as a native ClickHouse cl native tool, and this transfer allow you to quickly and easily integrate your Kafka uh, topic with a ClickHouse. Uh, at the end of... Uh, of this presentation, I will show you how to do this in a live demo. So uh, let's jump to the next use case. And next use case is a data warehousing use case. Data warehousing use case is a quite different. And this is actually very important because for data warehousing scenario, most important source here is not a stream. It's something transactional, usually a database, classical database or no scale database. But main important thing is that this transactional database, what is actually means for you as an analytics? That means that you have a history of this data and history of this data data can be quite significant and you need to do some uh, do some, something with it but besides the history of this data this transactional data actually have some increments some changes inside of it and you need to handle uh, these changes these changes usually grouped into transactions and they usually uh, quite fast arriving they have highly high volume of transactions uh, those storages it's like a main operational storage and uh, you need to process it and the question is how to process them the easiest way to uh, to deliver the, uh, data from your transactional database for you to your data warehouse is set up something like uh, a snapshot. Snapshot is just simple. It, it can be simplified to select. So you select everything from a one database and insert this everything to another database. This is basically your snapshot uh, process. And to make it possible for for real world application, you need to repeat a snapshot from from, uh, from time to time. This is very simple solution. Um, and this solution can actually work quite well for, for some time, but it has certain limits. What is the main, main restriction here? In source database on this particular case, uh, we actually select everything and write to a target database. And if source database will select this data quite frequently, the load on this source database becomes significant and it can be quite annoying for ops people that your application is actually overload your source database another important thing is uh, a lack delivery lack what is actually a lack means in a in, in a delivery pipeline is how fresh your data in a data warehouse in terms of a source to target copies if you copy everything to a target your data is fresh, but it's uh, but freshness of, of this data is actually measured in start time of the uh, copy procedure and uh, plus uh, time that actually it took to copy. So if you want to do this uh, process uh, and if you have a requirements to have a fresh data on the data warehouse and in modern data, data analytical solutions, you have to have fresh data as fresh as possible. 
you will have some, some troubles because the quickest way that you can do this if you uh, do just a snapshot copy pr procedure is uh, to have a, a lag which equals to amount of times that you need to copy this data. And if data volume is high, you have some troubles. You can optimize this but may, by making this copy smaller and uh, this actually uh, it was a very uh, simple procedure. You just specify some columns that identify your cursor value and do the incremental copies. Those incremental copies can be smaller and therefore smaller lag. But make it even better, we can, you can utilize the source database uh, capabilities of logical replication. A double cloud and uh, a double cloud must we implement for main databases logical replication mechanism. So you don't need to worry about this. You just set, set up not just a copy procedure, but copy plus replicate procedure. So we copy initial snapshot of a data and then start the replication process. The replication process itself is a, a very lightweight procedure. We don't uh, read uh, all the data all the time. We just read only new data. And how we read this? By utilizing replication protocol from classical transactional database. We took the replication protocol from example from MySQL, it would be a pin log, and translate to a click house events. And those streaming pro process is actually seamless and very fast and efficient. For many databases, streaming is uh, the, the easiest and the cheapest in terms of uh, in terms of uh, performance way to deliver a fresh data to a target database. And the another important aspect of such a delivery is this: that your application will have a very small lag, and this lag will be in a matter of a seconds, not matter of minutes, hours, or days that you had before. So logical replication is uh, very uh, advanced technique for um, for aggregating data for data warehousing and it's actually very capable of uh, of us uh, some something it's capable of delivering very fast data and very big volume of data and double cloud transfer allow you to do it seamlessly so this is uh, in, in many cases it's not needed if you don't have the requirements of the fast data but if you have such requirements then replication is a nice add to your delivery pipeline so what is a allow? Uh, what is double cloud transfer uh, give you to uh, build your data warehouse solution? First of all, it's a logical replication support. It's very uh, convenient uh, protocol that uh, allow you to build pipeline with a very minimal delivery lag and very minimal impact for your source database. Your source database will not notice this logical replication. Another important thing it's uh, again for scalability. The scalability here is also vertical and horizontal. In terms of vertical scalability is most important for a transactional database because eventually if you have a transactional database, the replication mechanism only can be only one because logical replication usually bounded to one particular database. But you still have a horizontal scalability. Horizontal scalability means that you can add uh, as many databases, as many sources as you want. And this horizontal uh, scalability can be, can, can be infinite. And vertical scalability, we can uh, scale the logical replication up to 100 transactions per second, which is quite big volume even for the transactional database itself. Uh, so this is what uh, what what we have actually as a double cloud transfer as a cloud native tool. And let me uh, briefly recap what I'm talking. The double cloud transfer uh, is a cloud native tool for ClickHouse. It allows you to integrate seamlessly ClickHouse with other databases. Uh, it can be either SaaS streaming uh, or OTP databases. The streaming Pipeline can be either snapshot for simple process or replication for more advanced logical replication or streaming or snapshot plus replicate if you want to combine both those two. This is scalable system and allow you to uh, scale your delivery pipeline up to several gigabytes per second, which is a big volume of data and it supports uh, a lot of connectors, either SaaS connectors, uh, streaming or database connector. So this is what we actually have for, for double cloud uh, to offer for ClickHouse and how to integrate ClickHouse with, with the real world. And uh, that was uh, uh, actual preparation for a small demo. So now I sh will uh, share the different screen and we'll show you a small demo. So, here is my 
screen uh, and this is a double cloud platform this double cloud platform is has it's empty cloud with nothing and we i i, I did create uh upfront couple entities first of all i create a clickhouse cluster where we can lend this data and kafka cluster for uh, streaming purposes the kafka cluster itself is uh, uh, uh is quite empty i would say but uh uh we actually will produce some records into it. So in this Kafka cluster, we already I already prepared for you one topic, which is a JSON event. And I will deliver this topic uh, as a streaming uh, pipeline to a click house. To make this happen, I need to create, first of all, the endpoint. This, this, let's start with a target endpoint. This target endpoint would be our uh, click house, they have a hard target. Uh, this target is a click house with default database and default authorization. Nothing is need to be set up. Everything is straightforward. You just need to select which cluster you need to populate. Then I will create uh, a source and point. The source and point here, first of all, would be a Kafka topic. The Kafka topic is, uh, I don't know the structure of the data in this Kafka topic, it's a JSON events. Uh, so here is my Kafka, here is my uh, authorization. Uh, the topic is JSON event. And uh, this data is a JSON data. I will specify a list of uh, fields that this JSON contains, the type field. There is a stream, yes, ETF stream. Then we have a price. Uh, it's a double, then we have a card number. It's also screen, and then we have a region code. This data is uh, contains pre predefined by me. So system columns, yeah, let's, uh, so, so let's test it, uh, this data is deliverable and let's see what is actually this data about. There is, should be like a couple rows I did prepare this upfront. Uh, they usually, this test mechanism is a very handy mechanism for you to understand where the, you, you, you set up everything perfectly. And as you can see, the JSON event data is uh, readable. There is some data, there is some card number, price, and a type, the rabbit for 109 of something. So let's submit it. Uh, so we have source endpoint, target endpoint, the transfer itself, domain entity of a transfer is, the, the main model of a transfer is relatively simple. You have two endpoints and you have transfers that connect them. Source endpoint, target endpoint, and a transfer that connects it. Uh, so let's create a transfer. This transfer will connect Kafka to a JSON endpoint and click house uh, Delha target endpoint. Right. JSON events. Uh, this is a replication. Uh, everything is a default. My default setting should be good enough. And here is our transfer. Now I need to just activate it to spin up the delivery pipeline. This delivery pipeline will have everything under the hood. It will read data from a JSON topic in the Kafka. It will parse this data. It will understand the schema of this data because it specifies this just a second ago and will create a target database and a click out. This target database and a click out will be automatically inferred schema, so you don't need to worry about this. So uh, the data is uh, start writing. I see that some logs appears and I see that there is some running events here. So that's it. That's basically your delivery pipeline. Uh, now we need to understand that this data is uh, delivered successfully to a ClickHouse cluster. How to do this? Uh, you just need to query the data. So uh, you have a demo cluster, you have a web SQL here, uh, and inside of a web SQL, uh, you have uh, your SQL editor. So let's try to see if there is some table. Yep, there is one table, JSON event, and there is my JSON event. That's simple. And once the data is pushed to a topic, the table is grow. Let me push a couple more events. So it's now 51. 
let's write this one very just on a lens and now it's 72 let's push 10 more and it's 82 that's simple uh, but this is just for streaming streaming is a relatively straightforward process let's try to do uh, to set up something more complicated in this case i mean by complicated is a setup for transactional database to your ClickHouse database. For the transactional database, I will choose the MySQL database. So let's set up a MySQL source endpoint here. So MySQL, MySQL, I already prepared the database uh, here. And this database, where is this database? Credentials located, wait a second. It should be here. So, uh, uh, first of all, uh, we have an endpoint address. I create the Amazon uh, MySQL instance. The database name is employees for me. User, user and password. I will not say the password. Secret. But that's basically a setup for MySQL database. Next, I need to verify that connectivity is working and what's actually inside of this database. Uh, I do remember that in this database, several tables, I think five or six of them, uh, but I don't remember exactly how what, what, what's in it. I don't know uh, what's the structure yet. So we infer everything, we infer a structure of a tables, so we infer the content. I can see there is some departments, departments manager, employees, and sellers. Cool. Uh, let's submit this endpoint as a source. So we now have a three endpoints, but this endpoint is not connected to any transfer. Let's create a transfer that will uh, join this table into a ClickHouse. So the MySQL endpoint source and ClickHouse target. And this would be a MySQL source snapshot. So this is our snapshot. Let's make this as simple as possible, but you can uh, make it more complicated. I will make this snapshot periodic, let it be every every while. And this snapshot will be just rewrite your target database once an hour. Uh, so let's submit an endpoint. So here is our endpoint for my scale to click house. Let's activate it to spin up a process. This activation procedure will copy everything. And once it's copy, it will stop. And then we'll file one new copy in one hour because this is a scheduled snapshot. This scheduled snapshot is uh, relatively quick. The data volume here is not that large. Uh, let's wait a couple of minutes. Yep, it's every, every transfer actually have logs and monitoring capabilities. I use this quite often, but and actually it's very useful for everyone uh, who want to understand what happens inside. And if something went wrong, the, the details will be there. For, for now, everything is fine. Uh, I will just uh, observing the progress because uh, we also prompt the info logs in, for every transfer and these info logs provide you information about what's happened. For example, I commit one row or I uh, uh, resolve a click house shard cluster name. This information is uh, useful. So yeah, the snapshot procedure is uh, ongoing. Uh, it usually took a couple minutes. Uh, but once it will finish, I will I, I can observe actually data in the ClickHouse database. So the snapshot is going. Uh, so once the snapshot is done, the data would be, yeah. So I write 80 megabytes of data to a ClickHouse. It's compressed, 2300. 200,000 rows, something. So it's, it's not a small database, but not the biggest in the world. So officially it's done. It took a couple minutes. And let's uh, refresh our table list. And here are all our tables is here. So I can see how many employees I have. And I have 300,000 employees and 20 rows. So it's a big volume. And I can do some aggregation queries here uh, and I can understand what is the data structure. So let's uh, see what is my gen gender, gender structure in, in a company. Gender. And 
identify gender and select gender and count how many employees of this particular gender. So we have uh, this proportion gender uh, here, but more or less not so bad. We have 120,000 people uh, females and 180,000 people uh, male. So here is your analytical queries. Now you can build something on top of it. And to build something on top of it, you can utilize our visualization toolkit. The visualization toolkit is quite easy and straightforward. Uh, Things that you can build actually dashboards and charts out of your data. You just set up a connection here. So this is my click house. This is my demo cluster. Password. And this password you can find right here. And connection is fine. Click house. Connection is fine. So so here's my demo, here's my connection. So I now created a data set and this data set would help your data. And on top of this data set, you can build a chart. So here's data set, here's my employees. And you can see the data is same. So it would be employees. And I create a chart out of this employees. Visualization, create a chart. I need a I need a chart which is a pie chart. I need to select the data set which is employees. So categories would be a gender. And uh, I think uh, ah, gender. Yes. And uh, gender and uh, something like okay. So I don't know how, how, how analytics works. But that's basically the idea. You can jump around with the charts and create something with the charts. So this is basically uh, uh, the quick 10 minutes demo, but this quick 10 minutes demo built your small data warehouse and a reliable data pipeline because the data pipeline is already there. It will be scheduled. It will run in the background and populate your data. And this data can grow uh, and scale on any and any number of uh, uh, data that you have. And on top of this data, you can actually build your own application or you build you can build your analytics with a visualization toolkit that we have, or you can use anything, any other tools that can possible with a ClickHouse. This is what, what we actually call the modern data analytical platforms that we try to build. Uh, that's all that I have for demo side. And we, we will jump back to uh, questions. So uh, the presentation and demo is done. Let's let's jump to our questions. Uh, if you have any questions, just uh, pop up these questions in in Q and A section below. So uh, can I transfer my data from a ClickHouse database on my local laptop to a ClickHouse using ClickHouse Click? Yes, this is a good question. Actually, uh, you can do this, and it's quite easy to do with a pipe operator. You just select everything via CLI utility from your local ClickHouse and pipe, and a ClickHouse uh, pipe to your target database. Uh, you you can copy the ClickHouse CLI command from the uh, from the ClickHouse uh, cluster screen and just pipe it. It will work perfectly for you. Okay. Okay. This is answer. Any more questions, guys? Uh, any more uh, questions and suggestions? Uh, 
Okay. Uh, if no questions, uh, I will wrap it up and uh, please visit our Slack and our LinkedIn. Those two source of information, we just we usually post uh, some stuff on Slack and on uh, LinkedIn. Just follow us and you will don't miss any uh, reliable content for modern data analytics. Yeah, good question. Can we embed visualization into custom portal? portal? Yes, indeed, you can. Uh, that's actually the most powerful feature of our analytics that we have, uh, our, our visualization toolkit that we have. We had so-called visualization embeds. You can create a small iframe of a chart or group of chart and embed it whenever you want. So yes, we have the embeds here. You can uh, embed this information on your on your custom web, web portal. So, if you have any more questions, feel free to uh, pop pop it here in the chat, or you can reach us uh, via Slack or LinkedIn. We always help, uh, are glad to help for for you to build your modern uh, for build for you to build your data platforms and also don't forget that we have a trials if you want to uh, to try uh, double cloud uh, just register on our main page and you will uh, receive a $300 trial for your play you can uh, check uh, double cloud click house transfer visualization all together uh, for the on a trial, and if it feels fits well for your business needs, just uh, uh, just continue, and we'll uh, and and we'll help you to build your perfect data platform. Um, it was a pleasure to present this uh, this webinar for you guys. I think this uh, recording would be available on our LinkedIn. So if you want to see some of this information later, subscribe to our LinkedIn, and also if you have some real questions, uh, real time. Or, or, or later questions uh, regards to the ClickHouse transfer visualization or whatever the, you need for data platforms, uh, feel free to ask them in our Slack channel. So yeah, thanks guys for attending and uh, let's call it a meeting. Bye-bye guys.